I'm reading from the Acts of the Apostles. This is chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love the local church. And maybe I love the church for some of the same reasons that you love the church. The local church is one of the first places where I experienced God, where I encountered God. That happened in worship, during prayer and during singing of hymns. It happened as I experienced healthy relationships with people, people who made God's love real, who loved me when I was lost, when I struggled to love myself. The local church is where I met people who made God's love real to me when I was shy and awkward, when I was lonely and when I was hurting. I love the local church because it is where I was challenged to read and study the Bible and to learn about my faith, my faith story and history. I was encouraged to pray in lots of different ways. And the local church is where I developed lasting friendships with others who would encourage me and support me and nurture me on my faith journey. Our reading this morning is a window into the very beginnings of the local church. It tells of a house church that grew as the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, as they shared life together and grew in their faith. Let's back up a little in the story. We read from Acts chapter 2. In Acts 1, post-resurrection Jesus tells his followers, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Then Jesus disappears. He ascends to be with God. His words become true according to the opening verses of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. We are told all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Immediately, the followers of Jesus become witnesses. They begin to speak about God's deeds of power in languages that are clear to the international crowd that is gathered in Jerusalem. And then the apostle Peter begins to speak about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. His words result in the baptism of 3,000 people on that one day. But the power of the Christian message was communicated not only by words. It was communicated through actions. Acts. This is the book of Acts. You get that, right? Our story today from Acts tells us that the members of the church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We also learn that the community shared everything. In fact, they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Because of this just and generous way of life, a life rooted in prayer and expressed in compassion, the church had we heard the goodwill of all the people. It continued to grow day by day as the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. I love the local church. 
As I discerned my call to ministry, I knew it would be connected to serving in the local church. It wasn't a call to chaplaincy and not to administration, but in a local church setting. Why? Because it was God working in and through the people and ministries of the local church that saved me. It was God working through the church ministry areas named in the passage it, that called me. They called me to belief and called me to join the church. It was a church devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. The Holy Spirit worked in my heart to heal and to be open to the loving people in the local church. And that set me forever in a community of love and caring and amazingness. Awe and wonder, just like it says, and my calling is and has been to help churches continue to be places of love and places of welcome, places of healing and places of prayer. As a portrait of the early church's first blossoming, this text captures our interest. The community of first followers of Jesus went from a house church to a mega church of 3,000 after one sermon. And in verse 47, it says the numbers continued to grow daily. So we hear that story and then we think about our own church or our own experience of church. And we begin to wonder, not in awe and wonder, not like talked about here, but we begin to wonder what happened. The example in the story is beyond our reach, even beyond our imagination. We are tempted to nostalgia for those biblical days. And from there, it is a short step to nostalgia for our own church's better days. Days when pews were full, Programs were exciting, and we had an impact on the larger community. Our history, stories told in Nell's book, our history is filled with stories of the glory days and even boasts about the time when membership was over a thousand. After Peter's first sermon on that first Pentecost day, 3,000 people were baptized and joined the church. In order to have 3,000 people be baptized and join, you have to have 3,000 people in attendance. Will, for, will College Heights ever get back to the good old days? Do we remain in our nostalgia, longing, hoping, wishing? Do we despair? Do we despair about things that will never be the same again? God, I hope not. But this is what I hope for. I hope that we devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. I love the local church because when I desperately needed God, I went to a church and they loved me. They welcomed me. They loved me into a relationship with God. Back then, 40 years ago, I knew that if I needed God, then I needed to go to a church. I had been in churches before, so it was not totally terrifying to walk through the doors. Today, it's a whole different story. People looking for God are not going to come to a church. They are not going to darken the doorway. Most have never been to a church and will not come here on their own. You know what that means. It means we have to go to them. And you can believe this. Your fear about going to them is just as real as their fear about coming to a local church. We've just finished a worship series geared to helping us reimagine our space, our church property. 
It was an opportunity to celebrate and learn from our history as a local church and to remind us that in every season of the church, we are called to be faithful stewards of what we have. We inhabit a different world these days. We all do. We've known that we are in a postmodern, post Christian world, and now it seems that we are post everything, and we have no idea what is next. Yet we have the same calling to be Jesus' witnesses where we are and to the ends of the earth. Along with reimagining our property and our space as faithful stewards, we have to reimagine what it is to do and to be the local church in today's world. We do that remembering the church is not a building, the church is a people. Fresh expressions of church is a phrase that is used to talk about ways churches are doing new things in new places, doing new things and loving more people in the name of Jesus. We have a brief video to show you about fresh expressions of church. Let's watch. Um, it was not a dramatic um, drawback from the church. It was not anything bad that happened. It wasn't negative feelings. It was just life that kind of got in the way. I mean, I grew up in the church. It's hard to feel in a community, I feel like at my age. God tends to work in small ways that people overlook. I, I know that change is hard for almost everybody, but one of the things that as Christians we, we need to be willing to do is to accept change and welcome change and, and be a part of it. Fresh Expressions is a way of doing church with new people in new places by new ways. Uh, the word expression and the term fresh expression speaks to the diversity of movements that we believe the Holy Spirit is already stirring within people. A fresh expression could be 10 people. We believe a fresh expression might be 300 people packed into a coffee shop. We believe a fresh expression could be a missional expression of faith where people gather each week to do good in their community in the name of Jesus. Uh, I feel like the church is somewhere that needs to be somewhere that people can go and, and, and learn what to do and how to be how to be better. Too many churches are only concerned about filling the pews and the seats and making the uh, all the bills be paid. And instead, we need to be about reaching out to the whole community, everybody, and inviting them and helping them see that God loves them just just the way they are. We need to be willing to embrace people in their situation, the way they live their lives. I know a lot of people have expressed that they don't want their church to go away. They don't want, they don't want it to be just replaced by something new. And no, of course not. Um, the beauty of Fresh Expressions that I see is that not only can it work together, with the traditional existing church, but it has to work together. People express their love for people in many different ways, and God does the same for all of us. And so why should we hold it to a certain way when there's multiple ways to show God's love for people? When you take away the barriers, when you take away the rules and the finer details and the expectations and the feeling of not living up to those things, What's left, the bare bones, is loving people, being intentional with one another, and doing the best that we can. And I really feel that that's who God is, and I really hope that that's who God is. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We have received Holy Spirit power, 
and we are the beneficiaries of folks who witnessed in all those places, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, including the ends of the earth called for me, Lakeland. Where is it for you? The ends of the earth where you are. As we continue this journey together, the journey of being faithful disciples of Jesus Christ gathered at the heights, it is really important to know and to remember that we do have access to Holy Spirit power. And in order to be Jesus' witnesses, in order to love more people in the name of Jesus, we must devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Beloved local church, beloved virtual church, we are called to devote ourselves to teaching and learning and growing in our faith. We are called to fellowship with one another, to share life together, to help and encourage one another in every season of life together. We are called to break bread together in homes, in restaurants, indoors and outside, picnics and parties, in coffee shops, pubs, and in our fellowship hall. We are called to break bread together in worship, gathered around the Lord's table. And we are called to devote ourselves to prayer. We commit to pray for and with one another. We are to pray in our individual lives, at home, at work, with friends, with family. And there is an app for that, you know. And we must pray together in worship, in small groups, and when we gather as teams to work on church ministry. We are devoted to prayer, to breaking bread, to fellowship, and to learning and growing in our faith. I love reading the stories in Acts, stories filled with Holy Spirit power, filled with drama and big things happening. And I also love reading and being reminded how simple things make all the difference. Learning together, reading the Bible, worship, prayer, fellowship, and shared meals. Little things matter. They are small acts, small actions that make a huge difference. They are the actions that open us up to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. They are the practices through which God speaks and leads us to fresh expressions of church. These practices open our hearts and minds to reimagine how to be the local church today. Let's do this. And let's do one of those small acts right now. Let's pray together. Oh God, we hear your call. Your call out to devote ourselves to small things that make a huge difference that have a huge impact, not on us alone, but on your people. So God, help us in, our, in making a commitment to devote ourselves to learning and growing in our faith, to reading scripture, to being present for worship, to pray for and with one another, to gather in fellowship in some way, however we can connect with one another, help us. And God, help us in our times of sharing meals together and when we gather around the Lord's table. And in all of those things, we know that your spirit gathers with us, you are present with us, and that you will continue to guide us and show us what it means to be a local church today. God, we pray for a fresh expression, a fresh wind of your Holy Spirit. And God, we join our voices and we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.